welcome back. This is part three of my Practical Cloth Sims tutorial series. In this video, we will use the pressure feature that we saw in the last video, and we will create some real world uh, objects with it. So let's start with a pillow, maybe. Right, so we start with a cube. Um, we have to go in and subdivide this, just like I've shown you before. Now we might, might want to scale this down, make sort of a pillow shape. Now we have more resolution going this way than this way, but let's ignore that for now. So right away, I'm going to bring this up a little, then add a ground plane, switch on collision on the ground plane, take this and make it into a cloth simulation and Enable pressure, five, not 56, five. Okay. What happens? What's happening? No, this is not cloth, this is collision. This is cloth with pressure set to five. Okay. Whoops. Something is not working right here. Okay, so, well, the first very basic pillow is basically already done. Shade smooth. And again, maybe add one level of subdivisions. So you would have a little throw pillow or something like this. And that's really super simple to do. All you have to do is apply the cloth uh, simulation with some pressure on the inside. Now, maybe you wanted to add a button in the middle of this pillow. So we have to go into edit mode, find, maybe take those four in the center, but also on the other side. So I'm going into, into edit mode here or into wireframe mode, pick those. Then switch on proportional editing, set it to sharp, and then S on the C axis and bring this in. I'm just making a little dent in the middle. And with these vertices still selected, I'm creating a vertex group, call it pin, assign those vertices. And now I can go to my cloth simulation and find the shape, pin, use this and pin those, the, the locations of those selected vertices to where they are. Now start a cloth simulation and you can see we have this dent in the middle. Now all we really have to do is create a UV sphere, scale it down, squish it down on the C axis. Like so, and put it in there, and we have a button. Pillow with button. And we get the nice wrinkles here. You get uh, more detail in the wrinkles if you have more mesh for the cloth simulation to work with. So let's try that, select all of it, subdivide it once more. Go back and start the simulation. Now it's much slower, but we should get more wrinkles. You can see here. And also now it's really going to be slow. We want self collision on. So what happens now? It's very slow. Oi, 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 no. Um, I can't wait for this to calculate. So I'm just going to have some self collision. You get the idea with more mesh to work with the cloth simulation has uh, can calculate nicer and more wrinkles. Okay, so we have a pillow pillow is done, you could use this for throw pillows, like maybe this one. Or you could use this for a couch, you know, for the cushions. 
and you don't need to do any sculpting. It's just a very, very fast, simple cloth simulation. Okay, let's make a hot air balloon. So I go into front view. I found a reference image online. I'm just going to drag and drop it in here. And it's also not straight. Rotate. The quality is not very good of this image, but that doesn't matter. I just need it for the shape. Trying to straighten it out so that the axis here is in the middle and down here. And then the perfect mesh for this is going to be a UV, no, uh, yes, a UV sphere. Right, because it already has all these lines going down like this from the uh, North Pole to the South Pole. And that's basically what the uh, hot air balloon looks like. So let's bring this up. And now we're gonna go into edit mode, scale it up to the width, enable proportional editing up here, and then Try and shape this thing. Go to wireframe, GC. With the mouse wheel, we can change the, the radius of the influence, basically, for the proportional editing. Then I'm gonna take this bottom one and pull it down. Okay. And now, still with proportional editing, I will probably take uh, this loop. Scale it in like so and take this loop, scale it in so I'm just going to try and get the shape right like this and take these, pull them down a little Take all of these and remove them. And I'm just gonna take this down here and shape this like so. Okay, that looks pretty good. You can spend more time if you want. I'm also going to take this, no, this edge loop and pull it down here. Scale it in, turn off proportional editing. Scale it in because it looks like this whole part down here is perfectly round. So I'm going to take those, go over here to the vertex groups, add a new vertex group, rename it pin and assign these vertices. Okay, that looks pretty good. Then I can switch off the empty, go to top view. And now I'm going to do this. I'm going to select this edge loop going all the way down here. Okay. And then this one, this one, and this one. And then I will go three, the fourth one, three, the fourth one, leave, whoops. Leave three, take the fourth one and just keep going all around here so that I can then use the pressure feature. Do, 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 this one, one, two, three, and in the middle here, let's see. So we have all these loops selected. Now let's add those also to the pin group. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. There's something weird here. I still have to shape this a little, make it rounder. Yeah, that looks better. Um, and now we go over here. Uh, I mean over here. Uh, turn this into a cloth. Go all the way down to the field weights. Turn off gravity so it doesn't float away. Then we go to the shape here and uh, pin our group. And we have to enable pressure and give it, I don't know, pressure of 10. Now when I hit play, we get this. Already looks like a hot air balloon, very nice. So if we want more of this effect, we can turn the pressure up, hit space and it goes and pops out, <laughs> which is cool. 
Also, I think I'm gonna go to the first frame, go into edit mode and remove this vertex up here. Hit spacebar again, because then we can go in here and just uh, add a single face at the end if we want. Now, the cool thing here, we can shade this smooth. If we don't have enough geometry, we might want to go back into edit mode and maybe subdivide it once more. So we get um, a nicer surface here. And well, the cool thing here is that we started with a UV sphere. So this is perfectly UV unwrapped now. And you can very easily add um, like a logo or your texturing. But well, that's the basics of creating a hot air balloon with the pressure feature and the cloth simulation. Now we're going to create a beanbag chair. So let's delete everything, get a plane in here, turn this into a collision object. And then for the beanbag chair, we have several options. We have the UV sphere, but that usually has the issue with that pole up here. And if you want to use a subdiv modifier, this usually gets very ugly. The other option would be an icosphere, but that's just triangles, which is really not good if you want to add a subdiv modifier. So I think the best solution for this is to use a round cube. There's two ways to do this. You could add a cube and then use a subdiv modifier and subdivide it a bunch of times and apply it. Then you have a base, almost a round cube. Another way is to go to the preferences, go to the add-ons and look for extra. And there's add mesh extra objects. You can enable that. And then when you hit shift A, you now have more options in here. And there's the round cube. What is a round cube? It's a sphere made out of quads. So we don't have weird poles at the top and the bottom. And we also ha don't have triangles. We have real almost squares. It's all quad based, which is very nice if you want to add a subdiv modifier. And then of course you can either go in here to increase the resolution and we're going to do that. We know we need a lot of resolution for our cloth modifiers. Let me just turn this up to, I don't know, something. Oh, 30. Okay. Now I'm going to move this up above this plane because I want to drop it down a little so that it gets squished at the bottom. So this is going to be my bean bag. And I'm also going to go into edit mode and scale it on the C and make it a little bit of a more of an egg shaped thing and also rotate it a little. Now I already know that I want this to fall down and basically stick to this so it doesn't slide away. So I go into my collision object, the ground plane here and turn the friction up. And then I go in here and turn this into a cloth simulation. Of course, use the pressure feature. I don't know how strong yet. I do want uh, gravity. I just leave that on in here because I want it falling down. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's what that looks like. That's pretty nice. Now, of course, if somebody sat in it, we would have this dent in here. How do we get that? Uh, we're gonna get maybe an icosphere. Doesn't really matter. Go back to the first frame and move that up, scale it in a little. Move it up above. Uh, my beanbag. Turn this into a collision object. And now I'm gonna play the simulation right about here where this kind of settles. I want to move this guy down to here. Oh, you know what? Frame 26. Okay, if I forgot. I have to go to frame one, move him up here and add a keyframe here on the location. 
Now on frame 26. I'm going to move them down. Maybe in here on the side. So we could look like somebody sat in it. And then add another keyframe. And now let's look, let's see what that looks like. So if I hide this icosphere now, we get this nice dent, like somebody sat in it. But this is much too round, I think. I want to change this up a little. So I'll play with the keyframes here. Basically on frame 20, 25, I'm gonna move them up and add a keyframe here and then just one two three four five frames later i'm gonna move them in and add another keyframe so we get this animation which just pushes it in faster and probably gives us nicer looking wrinkles yeah that looks pretty cool so we have a beanbag chair, somebody sat in it, and we have the nice wrinkles, and it's all still quad-based topology. I'm gonna set the end frame to 50 and quickly bake this, go to cache, end frame 50, and hit bake. Okay, now if I go to frame 50, this is the beanbag chair that I have. And I can add a subdiv modifier to get more detail in here. Nicer wrinkles. And it still looks very nice because it's all still quad based because we used the round cube. Now all you have to do is give it a material, give it a color. I don't have any lights in here, but that doesn't matter. Turn down the roughness a little. Or keep the roughness and turn up the clear coat. It looks really plasticky. Well, you get the idea. We used um, the cloth simulation to create an uh, asset for architectural renderings, maybe a beanbag chair, all done with just very simple cloth simulation and two um, collision objects. And finally, let's create an inflatable or inflated letter. You know, you can buy those balloons for like birthdays, you know, in the, in the shape of numbers or digits, or I think they even have letters. So how do we go about that? Let me delete everything. Just add a text. I'm just gonna do one letter. Maybe I'll just do an A. Rotate X90. Now we can go in here and take the geometry, bevel this and extrude it a little. I really want quite the bevel on this to have a nice round shape here. Okay, I think we can work with this. Now I'm gonna right click and convert to mesh. And when I go into object or edit mode, you can see the mesh that this created is not really usable for a, a cloth simulation. It's, it's quite weird. We don't have enough. Even if we sub, subdivide this now, it's gonna be subdivided in a very, very strange way. So instead of using this mesh like this, I'm gonna use a new feature in Blender, which is the voxel remesher. Now we have to check out the size here. How big is this object? It is roughly 76 centimeters in width. So maybe I'm just gonna scale this up to make it one meter uh, on the X dimension here. Bring it maybe to the center like this. So I know this is one meter and I want to subdivide with my voxel remesher and I'm gonna do one centimeter. So I'll have 100 subdivisions going on the X. I hope this is not too much detail. Let's see. Voxel remesh. And now we get this mesh. And this is, of course, very nice for cloth simulations. So, in fact, I think that the cloth simulations 
really, really profit from this new uh, remeshing tools that we have in Blender 2.8 now. Now, right away, I think I want to go in here and, and change some stuff around here because uh, think of it, if this is a balloon, we wouldn't have hard edges like this. So I'm just going to select, can't I select this? Just going to select those. And with proportional editing switched on. Mm, this is not good. Maybe sharp. Just bring this in a little so we don't have. It looks like more, more like a balloon is what I'm trying to say. Okay. So, of course, we can do this up there, too. Um, now, hmm, how about we create a crease down the side here? So, what do we want? We have to take this edge, maybe. We don't really have one that's going right down the center. That doesn't matter. I'm just going to take this one, or maybe this one. And then I hit Alt-S which is a scaling on the normal. I'm still in proportional editing mode, so I'm using the mouse wheel to take this down to a smaller circle and bring this out just a little bit. So we get this, like it's made out of two pieces stuck together. Okay, so let's see what that looks like if we now go into a cloth simulation apply pressure and also I'm gonna switch off gravity so it doesn't fall down and hit the space bar and there we go this is what we get our crease kind of di almost disappeared maybe we should use some pinning for this let's see let's play this out a little this is what it looks like Okay, looks kind of cool. Now let's go back into edit mode and maybe pin a few of those on our crease. So I select random, go down here and choose deselect. So I'll just keep, I don't know, 25%. Oh, no, I deselect 75%. So I just have a few of those selected on the crease. I'm going to create a new group, vertex group, assign those selected ones. And let's see what that looks like now if we apply pressure. Oops, of course, I have to uh, pin this in my cloth simulation. So what do we get now? Not what I expected. Maybe we have too much pressure. So let's play with these values a little. What if we turn up the pressure? Make it very, very high. Okay, now let's try something uh, more radical. Go in here and subdivide this so we get much more mesh data. And then let this render out or uh, simulate out. Usually you get a lot of nice looking creases with uh, high mesh data. High poly mesh is what I'm trying to say. So we have an inflated A, and this is what it looks like. And it really looks like it's inflated because of these all these wrinkles and creases. We even get them here. We can make those pop more with a subdivision modifier on top. And of course, with a material that 
has a little bit more like a metallic effect maybe make it golden like this turn down the roughness now you can really see all these creases and wrinkles so this is how you inflate a letter or of course you can do this also with the logo and you can even animate it If you enjoyed this tutorial of the Practical Cloth Sim series, please smash the like button below and consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. I read all the comments, so please drop me a note and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, see you over in the next video.